all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Holy crap. What a teaser that was. And I recorded my whole reaction for it. So you're very, very welcome. I was streaming on Twitch, streaming on YouTube. We peaked at 2.3 thousand people, 2,300 people combined on both platforms. That is nuts. Honestly, thank you for just for the the support uh and everything we're so close to 1.0 and i'm not going to keep you here for long enjoy this and i would have gone work on a video as you can probably tell by reaction bit who talks about doing a video but i'm going to do a video on top of this kind of looking into more of it and all that kind of stuff uh and uh or maybe i do something different we'll see we'll see but enjoy the video and uh i can't wait guys like i said we're gonna watch the video without me saying anything and then we're gonna quickly go back through it and then we're gonna depends if i've got to make a youtube video okay enjoy the video get get hyped we're super close to 1.0 let's do this Seven. World premiere. I haven't been able to sleep in days. That stupid, loud, summer sloop laser machine they have running in their backyard. What does it even do? What does it even do? Before we get into whatever that is, um, and before we get into the cliffhanger that I kind of left you on last week with the, the whole change of the blueprints, we'll get to that. We'll get to the good stuff, okay? But before we get into that stuff, I have a couple of things that I just want to like do a little bit of spring, spring cleaning and talk about a few things that we've been wanting to talk about in past videos, but we haven't really found a good opportunity to do it, or I just straight up forgotten to talk about it. So, so speed run of a couple of new exciting things coming in 1.0 that we haven't talked about yet and that we should given that this is the last week before the release. Um, so let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna mention is that we are going to add two new liquid fuel types that we haven't talked about yet. And those are both sort of extensions on the existing production chain for turbo fuel. And the first one I wanna talk about is rocket fuel. Rock fuel! So by combining nitric acid and turbo fuel in the blender, you're going to be able to produce uh, rocket fuel. And when you do this, you're also gonna get a byproduct of compacted coal, just so you know. And rocket fuel can be used in a lot of different things. Uh, for instance, in vehicles, you can also of course put it in fuel generators. And if you do, it'll have a burn rate of 4.167 cubic meters. And you can also use it in the jetpack. And if you do, it'll give you hella launch. Like it'll shoot you right up there. It gives you so much velocity in the vertical region, if you know what I mean. But it does consume fuel fairly quickly in the jetpack, so I highly recommend uh, bringing a parachute with you if you decide to use it in the jetpack. But rocket fuel isn't turbo fuel's final form. There's actually one extra step that you can take, and that is called ionized fuel. Vegeta, what does the scatter say about ionized fuel's power rating? It's over 9,000! I regret recording that. <laughs> So once you get to the point where you can automate uh, synthetic power shards, you're going to be able to automate ionized fuel. So by combining rocket fuel and uh, power shards in the refinery, you're going to be able to create ionized fuel. Uh, it will also leave a byproduct of compacted coal, uh, but I'm sure you'll find like a good use case for that. And it's sort of the same deal, you know, you can use it in vehicles, you can use it in uh, fuel generators, it'll have a burn rate of three cubic meters, and you can also use it in the jetpack. And it's pretty dope in the jetpack actually, because it gives you higher thrust than anything else, uh, it has slower consumption rate than, than rocket fuel, and it has way better air control actually. But one thing that rocket fuel has that ionized fuel doesn't have in the jetpack specifically, is that 
it has a much higher uh, velocity ceiling. So you can go faster upwards, essentially. And one thing I also want to mention on the topic of fuel types is that drones now can use most fuel types in the game. So drones are no longer like exclusively for batteries. They can also take advantage of many of the different fuel types that you can package. They also fly differently depending on what fuel type that man is. So like the better the fuel type, the faster the drones will fly. So that's it for fuel types. Next thing I want to talk about is quality of life features that we've added. So there's a couple of changes we've made um, that are fairly small features by themselves, but I think they have a pretty big impact on like when you're playing the game. So let's let's check some of them out. So we put some effort into making, you know, building in general feel more tight and, and you know, of the good, good kind. Uh, and these are kind of hard to like explain specifically what we've done. We just like improved how snapping works and make it more so that like, you know, when you're placing stuff, you sort of get what you expect and, and get the behavior out of the build mechanics uh, that you expect. Uh, but one specific thing I want to mention is that uh, now, instead of having to aim at the input and outputs of building, you just need to aim at the building itself. And it will like snap towards whatever input and output or whatever uh, that makes sense. Uh, instead of having to like finagle around and aim specifically where you need to. We've also made improvements to guidelines on how they work. So previously it was just like one green line that showed up. If you hold down control and you aim at stuff, it would just like indicate to you where stuff is aligning. So now it has a visual change and it also now properly snaps buildings on foundations when you hold control. Ooh. And like I mentioned, it has a visual change as well. So now it also indicates when you're trying to connect and align stuff with like inputs to outputs and stuff like that, it will show you that. And it will We'll visually show this by having either a green line to show inputs, it will have a red line to show output, and it will have a blue line to indicate like the center of mass of the building if you want to align buildings to buildings. And we also have so that like inputs and outputs have dashed lines and they're also moving to sort of indicate direction as well. So now hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to sort of figure out like where things go. Hopefully the guidelines will make it a bit clearer now as to where you're placing the buildings. And the next thing I want to talk about, let me just hook up this belt here and let me do... <gasps> Ooh, did you, did you see that? Did you see, did you see what just happened? So, so yeah, <laughs> this, this is the shit actually. <laughs> So now when you're placing conveyor belts, they have two different build modes. You have the default build mode and you have the straight build mode. And the straight build mode is essentially what it tells you on the box. It will make it so that conveyor belts are always facing straight and they will make perfect 90 degrees corners, making it a lot smoother to build like straight uh, conveyor belt lines if that is something that you're into, you know? And yeah, I really like this change. This is like one of my favorite changes in 1.0. It makes it so much easier to just plop things down. Um, hope you'll enjoy that. I do want to mention real quickly though that uh, you one thing you're gonna notice when you're when you're building with this is that this is gonna feel super great, but then when you start placing pipes on foundations, you're gonna miss this feature because we haven't implemented this for pipes yet. Um, mm. Because it okay. pipes work a little bit differently. We do have like the vertical build mode, which um, it will straighten up the pipes vertically, but when you're placing them on foundations, they don't automatically do the same thing as, as, as conveyables do. But here's the thing, if you really want this for pipes as well, please let us know on the QA site once 1.0 comes out um, and make sure to upvote that and uh, yeah, let us know so we can maybe look into this. And one final thing I'm gonna mention when it comes to like building conveyor belts, pipes, whatever, is that it's now possible when you hold control when placing railways that they will snap and become straight. And it's a little bit of a hidden thing. It's not like a build mode that we have for railways. Um, but yeah, just know that if you hold control when placing railways, they're gonna go like straight up. The last quality of life feature I wanna mention is that it's now also possible to change uh, like modes for chainsaws. So in the base game, uh, chainsaws have this like knew about this thing one. when you're chainsawing My down God, a tree, you'll also get like all the bushes and shit and like in proximity of it. And some people find it annoying that like, if you just want to remove like this one tree, but want to leave the rest of the foliage, this wasn't really possible without like tricks by having like full inventory and stuff, stuff like that. Uh, but it's now possible to switch on the chainsaw to like single mode and whatever you chainsaw down will be the only thing that you remove. That's quality of life. Next thing I want to talk about is cosmetics. So you may or may not have noticed that there's been a couple of new uh, cosmetic options uh, and most notably are these like barriers, uh, buildables things that we have here. So we've shown them in the uh, trailers that we made up at this point and we also featured them in, in a couple of, um, of the teaser videos we made. So yeah, there's two barrier types. There's the short one and the tall one. 
And there's also like this new like fence barrier thingy that Fence. also comes in two variations. Fence. And we also Fence. have a couple of new windows uh, that are there. So have fun with that. <laughs> While there might not be a lot of new buildables in 1.0, we have added something really cool, which is like finishes uh, that you can be able to customize your factories more with. So think of these as sort of like skins that you can apply on top of the existing buildables. Instead of just being mm. able to paint them and have different colors, you can also get like different finishes and sort of different materials on the buildables. And these range from stuff like, you know, bronze and Caterium finish and chrome finish. Like there's a couple of them and they're, they make things just look a bit more shiny. All right, so with that out of the way, let's finally talk about the changes we made to blueprints. So I'm really excited to talk about this. So one thing that people have always wanted when it comes to blueprints is the possibility of oh. We need to talk about that now. Okay, we cannot leave that unfinished. All right, let's get into it. So this is gonna be the meat of the video, okay? We're gonna talk about what that is and what you use it for. The thing in the sky, the big eye thing, that is actually a Mercer sphere. As you've been exploring the planet of Massage 2 ABBB, there's, <laughs> there's been a couple of uh, artifacts, I would say, that you haven't been able to take advantage of, such as the Summer Sloops and the Mercer Spheres. And in 1.0, these are finally going to be usable. And what the heck are you gonna use them for? Well, let me explain. So as you explore the planet, uh, you'll run into these like strange phenomena that you can discover. And by researching them in the MAM, along with the strange alien matter, uh, you'll be able to unlock like a whole new potential, alien technology. So let's first talk about the strange alien matter on the planet. So this is going to be sort of the basic building block for almost all technology that involve alien tech. So when you extract SAM from the planet, you're going to be able to create something called reanimated SAM. And this part is gonna be used in a lot of different things. For instance, you saw it in the converter and you saw it in, yeah, most of, I think you've only seen it in the converter actually, when I think about it. But yeah, it's gonna be used for a lot of different things. Reanimated SAM, you create in constructors straight with SAM and SAM fluctuators you create by combining uh, reanimated SAM, wire and pipes <laughs> in the manufacturer. And by the way, it's just SAM now because we've renamed it to Strange Alien Matter. And so it's not SAM or, okay? I just wanna, I just wanna put that out there because it's got sort of the same energy as saying ATM machine, okay? It's like an extra thing, no need for it. It's just SAM, okay? And SAM is also no longer a limited resource. It's, it's gonna work just as the same way as all other nodes. Um, and there's also a whole bunch of new SAM nodes on the map that you're gonna be able to take advantage of. So let's talk about the two other alien phenomena that you're gonna be able to uncover. So let's start with summer sloops. So as you may or may not have guessed, summer sloops are going to be used in this machine. This is the power augmenter. And the way this machine works is it essentially takes your existing power grid and augments it and makes it better and makes it stronger and with better access to the internet. And I'll explain how. So from Summer Sloops, you're gonna be able to create a power augmenter. When you place down this building, you're gonna get automatically 500 megawatts of power just straight out of the machine. So it's just like a, it just, you just get free power essentially from the Summer Sloop, I guess. And then what it does is when you connect it to a circuit, it will amplify that grid by 10%. So essentially, if you place down a power augmenter, you hook it up to your power grid, you get more power just 
that's it. There are no strings attached. The only trade-off is that you need to spend a summer sloop, and please remember that like summer sloops and mercosphere are limited resources on the map, so you can't build an infinite amount of these. But yeah, essentially, when you place a power augmenter and you hook it up to your to your power grid, you're just gonna get free power. It's free power. And the more power augmenters you, you build and place and hook up, the more you're gonna augment your grid. So they kind of stack, but not really, and I'll clarify a little bit further. So yeah, you can, you can add more mm. augmenters to further boost your grid, uh, but they don't boost like each other's boost, if that makes sense. Like it's not like percentage on percentage, if that makes sense. So, so let's get a bit nerdy, okay? So, so the way that power augmentation works is based on this formula, right? So P is your general yeah. production, and N is the number of augmenters that you've placed on your grid, right? So the first thing we do is we calculate your, your base production, which is like your production from your circuit, and then it's uh, the base power from the augmenter, which is 500 megawatts per augmenter, so 500 times N. And then we add on top of that, uh, the calculated boost, and we calculate the boost by taking this, this number that we just had, uh, P plus 500 times N, and then we multiply that with uh, 10%, one divided by 10, uh, times the amount of augmenters. And that way we're gonna get the number of uh, boosted power. This will also be on the test, by the way. I hope you take, took notes. I will it's not do a guide. Yet. And I'll make a uh, guide. one thing I also <laughs> want to mention for this formula is that uh, power storages are not included in like this like whole calculation because they can mess everything up. Like we just wanted to make sort of a simple uh, way to sort of see this. And you can see how much your, your power grid is boosted uh, when you're looking at the circuit because you'll get like that little number at the bottom there. So power augmentation is real cool, but that's not the only thing you can use summer sloops for they're also going to be able to be used for alien production amplification. So in the game, it's now going to be possible to further overclock all machines in the game. For every single machine, there's gonna be an additional <laughs> overclocking slot. So in addition to the existing uh, overclocking you're doing with power shards, there's also gonna be a little slot where you can place uh, summer sloops to amplify the output of machines. And it only amplifies the output, so it doesn't actually affect the input at all. So you're going to be able to overclock your machines with power shards, and on top of that, you're also going to be able to use summer sloops to further uh, amplify the production. The thing to take note though is that when you do this, it costs way more power. And the amount of summer sloops you're ne gonna need for the like desired amount of, of output amplification also varies from machine to machine. So that's everything you can do in 1.0 with summer sloop. And I have saved the best for last, okay? You have no idea, all right? I am so excited to talk about this next feature because this is my personal favorite feature in the game. And I actually think this feature that we've implemented solves like the biggest issue in Satisfactory up until this point. So strap in, okay? All right, the last bit of uh, you know strange phenomena that you're gonna run into on the planet is the Mercer Sphere. And the Mercer Sphere has Mm -hmm. Only one purpose uh, or use case, it's a but it is a good one, okay? With Mercer Spheres, you're going to be able to create a new building called the Dimensional Depot. So with the Mercer Sphere, you're going to be able to craft this storage container looking building, right? It looks like an ordinary storage container. Personal storage. You are wrong, okay? <laughs> it, it's, it, it is a storage container, it looks kind of fancy, um, but this is actually the Dimensional Depot uploader. So what you do with this building is you place it down, you hook it up with the conveyor belt, and you feed parts into it, and what it does is uploads any part that's put into the storage container up to the Dimensional Depot. And if you look over here real quick, I've got my regular inventory, but there's this little button here that I can also press. And if I press this button, I'm gonna get access to the Dimensional Depot wherever I am on the map. It's all there on the cloud. Ching! <laughs> So yeah, essentially you're going to be able to set up production lines that you can feed in, uh, produce parts, and upload them to the Dimensional Depot and be able to access them wherever you are on the map, anytime, any place. It is so nice to do this. You can just drag and drop any item into your inventory and they're just gonna like be there uh, immediately. They're just gonna, you're gonna download them from the Dimensional Depot right away. 
I don't know if I need to spell this out for you, but this means that you no longer need to like run back and forth between bases when you start running into, out of materials when you're building like a, another base or another outpost or whatever. Like I really think that this has been one of the biggest gripes that I've had when playing this game is that you're constantly like expanding your factory, but every time you do, you have to like keep track of, of all this stuff and you need to like sort out logistical nightmares just to be able to get the parts you need to be able to keep building your factories. And with the Dimensional Depot, it just makes everything nicer and so much easier to be able to, to keep playing the game essentially. And here's the thing too, from your inventory, you can also upload any parts to the Dimensional Depot, like from wherever you are. But there is a limited amount of slots that you can use to be able to do this. And one thing you might have also noticed is that uh, downloading is instant, but uploading takes time. So there's gonna be a limit as to like how many Story parts you career. can upload to the Dimensional Depot. And there's also a limit as to like how many parts you can have at the Dimensional Depot uh, at the same time. Stack sizes are a bit limited on the Dimensional Depot. Uh, but the thing is both of these things, uh, like the, the upload speed and the stack size on the Dimensional Depot, both of these things are going to be able to be upgraded in the MAM. And one really, really cool thing on top of all this stuff is that when you're building out in the world, it will also grab whatever parts that you need to place whatever building you're doing from the Dimensional Depot. So if you're running out of parts in your inventory, you don't need to download them into your inventory. They're just gonna be there when you build. It's, mwah, it's so, it's so good, it's so good. And it's also possible to set like, when you're building buildings, whether you want the parts for that building to come first from your inventory, or if you want them to come from the Dimensional Depot at first and save the stuff that you have in your inventory for later. But here's the thing with Dimensional Depot, this is purely for your own personal use. So it's only for your personal inventory. So you're not gonna be able to take advantage of this for any production lines. So um, while you're gonna be able to set up like steel production, feed those parts into Dimensional Depot so you can access them wherever, you're not gonna be able to take those parts and like set up another production chain somewhere else and just like grab them from the Dimensional Depot and, and start producing new parts from those things. So the Dimensional Depot isn't gonna be used for any type of like production automation or anything like that. That's not how the Dimensional Depot works. It's purely for your personal inventory. So yeah, that is that is that is a big that is a big feature coming in 1.0 and it's Ah, so good. And like I mentioned before, all this alien tech is researched in the MAM. So you're gonna be able to take advantage of this like as soon as you discover it essentially, but they are gated by your overall progression like most things in the MAM. Uh, but essentially, you're gonna get access to the Dimensional Depot once you've unlocked steel. You're gonna get uh, access to production amplification once you have access to tier five, and you're gonna be able to take advantage of power augmenters in tier six. That's it, folks. A lot of really exciting things coming in 1.0. I am so glad that I finally got to make this video because I've been looking forward to talking about the alien tech for so long. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a lovely uh, week. Bye-bye. Wait. It's gonna be something else. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. No, no, no. We can't end the video there. I still have one last thing we need to talk about. Third time's the charm, right? All right, I, all right. We're gonna talk about blueprints now, okay? Finally. Okay, so. A bit of feedback that we have always gotten when it came to blueprints and satisfactory is that people felt like the 4x4x4 grid or the 4x4 grid uh, is too small for blueprint for the blueprint designer. And, you know, there's supposed to be a, an element of like a challenge here, like being able to figure out like how to fit stuff in the blueprints. Uh, but we hear you, we understand uh, this bit of feedback. So in 1.0, we're going to introduce the Blueprint Designer Mark II. And the Blueprint Designer Mark II is a bigger blueprint designer, obviously. Uh, we've increased it now to be a 5x5x5 five by five by five blueprint designer. I know going from 4x4 four four to 5x5 five by five might not sound like a lot, but it is more roomy. You have a lot more space to deal with. And it sort of like, I think 4x4 four four was just on the edge of, of what people were able to do. Uh, so like you'll be able to do a lot more with just this tiny bit of increase. But unfortunately, due to technical reasons, you're not gonna be able to load a Mark I blueprint in the Mark II blueprint designer. Uh, but you will still be able to like, you know, take your blueprints made in the Mark I and place them in a Mark II designer, just as you can do in the regular blueprint uh, designer. Um, so, so long as they fit, of course. And with that, we have uncovered almost everything coming in 1.0. Uh, and I say almost because there's probably like a few things that I probably forgot to mention. Um, you know, there's a lot of new things in 1.0. But essentially, yeah, this is it. Um, there are going to be a lot of small tweaks here and there that I, like I said, probably haven't mentioned. And uh, there's also a bunch of bug fixing done to past issues and, and, and whatnot. And there's also a lot of optimization that have gone into this version of the game. 
Um, but I'll have to defer to the patch notes when it comes to these things because it's just too much for me to keep track of. Um, but yeah, with that said, next week is when 1.0 comes out. On Tuesday at 5 p.m. CEST is when 1.0 will drop and I can't wait to get it out there. And we will be live streaming the countdown to 1.0. So at 2 p.m. CSD, we're gonna start the live stream and we're gonna count down to 1.0 and we're gonna hang out with a couple of the devs. We're gonna talk about stuff for 1.0 and we're gonna have some fun essentially. So I hope to see you there and I hope you'll enjoy 1.0 and all the work that's gone into it. It's, it's been eight years working on this game now and it's all gonna come together now to next week. So really looking forward to that. Until then, everybody, take care. What the hell was that? Excuse me. Hello? Friendly? Lasers! <laughs> It's flying! Did I mention the laser beams, by the way? They're pretty laser. I've just lost my memory. I've just been men in black. <laughs> what was that? There's one thing we need right now, chap. There's one thing we need right now. That. <sighs> Claps, chap. Clap, clap, clap. I, do you. Do, do, I think I need to do a video. <laughs> do we. Do I need to do a video? I feel like I need to go and do a video. First of all, first of all, moment of silence. Quick TLDR. Quick TLDR. Jetpack fuels. New fuels. New fuels. What were they called? What was what was they called? Uh, rocket fuel and uh, uh, oxide ionized fuel. Ionized fuel. Okay, ionized fuel. Which one of them is the confirmation of that package canister? which we saw in the one minute trailer, which was near the gas. So this is, it's not, why are these, why does this keep flashbanging me right now? Um, and then we got this one. You can now snap to buildings, quality of life features, belt snapping, easy snapping, which was introduced in update five, got removed and now re-added. We now have the whole 90 degree belt straight snapping things. We also now have uh, train tracks can now go straight forward. Uh, the, the drones now use every single fuel. So, uh, like, whoa, whoa, what did, whoa, whoa, what did I miss on YouTube? Jacob with a 50 gifted memberships. <laughs> Holy moly. So drones use most fuels now, which eliminates batteries, but then you can use uh, the other fuels, but then that changes the speed of the drones. Uh, we've also got the, uh, the, 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 train lines can you can now press control to do, do them we knew about this one this one shared on twitter a couple of months back oh my God, this, I, the men in black are still after me guys so now the trees can be cut down which as you know previously you always had to fill your inventory to then cut it down if you wanted to cut a single tree down for some decoration in your factory that is not a thing anymore buildables we kind of saw this we got stairs the new fences we kind of knew all this we've seen all of this um and then the thing is nothing special but it's there colors gold or caterium i think he said we've got steel copper unpainted and then there's another one so these are kind of cool there we go uh then we've got what mercy spheres 1.1k watching on youtube ridiculous you're bloody filthy that's what you are uh mercy spheres so this is now a mercy sphere which is made in the mam by the way made in the mam as as well as the summer sloops and sam so that's all under one topic we got all of that. Uh, Sam fluctuators are confirmed. 
Uh, but then we got whatever's. So we, the sun flat. Some we, me and Total thought these were the sun fluctuators. No, it's coming out of the manufacturer. These flashbangs. And then we got summer sloops, which is the augmenter, right? Augmenter, which now power boosts. <laughs> by the way, um, power boosts uh, with this formula. Uh, so basically, you're gonna be over boosting your base power a bit more than likely or well think i'll test it i'll do a guide on it you can see here gets added to your electric thing blah -de blah -de blah then you can add a summer sloop to the actual machine to double output right then mercy this is huge absolutely huge um this now we have uh cloud storage so we can see small amounts which can be upgraded in the mam you can upload you can also build from here and all that kind of stuff insane if you're smart about it and you're going to build a new project you would have this full you would then go and empty all of this into your storage so this refills again so you can empty it back into your storage again so you can start doing your bigger projects right then i'm gonna we 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 got uh what else we got so you can see that they've got different numbers there because they've been upgraded which is nuts then we got yep take from it that's a it's a big part this this whole section whole section then we got blueprints mark two did not say anything about a mark three i thought there would have been a mark three and i did predict a mark two would be six by six or eight by eight not five by five um then the last thing which we're just going to play again was this What in God's earth is this? Disgusting. I now need to go make a video.